Hi, my name is Phil, and today I'm going to talk to you about two-dimensional transition metal dichalcogeni nanolayers. This is a relatively new class of materials that's being heavily investigated for its remarkable properties, only achievable at the extreme nanoscale. Let's take a look at the periodic table to see where the rest of the name comes from. Here we find what are known as the transition metal elements, labeled M. These metals have what are known as D electrons in their outermost electron shell, which will play an important role in determining the TMD's properties. The transition metal atoms form covalent chemical bonds with what are known as the chalcogen atoms, labeled X, located towards the right of the periodic table. For the compounds we're interested in here, each metal atom, M, bonds with two chalcogen atoms, X, giving us the generic chemical formula for TMDs, MX2. However, not all of the elements outlined here form nano-layered materials, which we're talking about. So we'll focus on these in particular. These tend to be metal atoms from group 4 through 7 and chalcogen atoms, including sulfur, selenium, and tellurium. So there you have it, layered transition metal dichalcogenides. When covalent chemical bonds form in TMDs, the transition metal readily transfers its electrons to the chalcogen atoms. This essentially fills the chalcogen atoms' valence shells with electrons. And this fact is responsible for the highly planar structure of TMDs, in which MX2 single molecular units can make up two-dimensional sheets which span up to inches in the in-plane direction while being less than one nanometer thick. This optical micrograph, taken by researchers at Columbia University, shows a top-down image of triangularly shaped MOS2 nanosheets on a silicon dioxide surface. The triangular shape is a direct result of the trigonal prismatic structure of the single MX2 cell. Having a wide range of material properties is an important aspect of daily life. We want conductors for moving electricity, insulators for preventing the flow of electricity, and semiconductors for tuning the flow of electricity. When designing 2D nanomaterials for different applications, we would like to have the same range of properties. As probably the most well-known 2D material, graphene was shown to have remarkable electronic transport properties. But its practical application as a semiconductor and electronic device is limited by the absence of a finite band gap. This is where TMDs show considerable promise. We can vary the properties of the 2D material by simply changing the central metal atom. For example, titanium disulfide is insulating while tantalum disulfide is metallic and molybdenum disulfide is semiconducting. The tunable electronic properties largely has to do with the number of the metal's outer D-shell electrons, which varies as we shift groups in the periodic table. Relatively recently, scientists have discovered that interesting property changes occur as these materials get thinner and thinner. Consider a stack of many layered TMDs alongside a single layered sheet. In order to measure the photo-generated current, we'll build a basic circuit. First, we'll make some metallic contacts to the edges of the TMD sheets. Then we'll apply a small voltage across the sheets and shine a visible laser on them. When we measure the current generated by the laser in the TMD, the single sheet has a much higher photoresponse than the thick sheet despite being physically less material. This has to do with the change in the electronic structure of the TMD as it gets thinner. TMDs with many layers have what is called an indirect band gap. For an electron to move from the ground state to the excited state in an indirect band gap material, it must gain energy and change direction. This significantly reduces its photoactivity. For single layered TMD sheets, the indirect gap shifts to become a direct gap. In this case, an electron only requires energy to move to the excited state, resulting in a greater overall interaction with incident light. In addition to being interesting from a purely scientific perspective, these extremely thin photoactive materials are desirable for a range of optical electronic device applications and for energy conversion applications. So how do we make TMDs so that we can use them for all this great stuff? Arguably the best and most scalable method is known as chemical vapor deposition or CVD for short. To get a sense of how this works, I've enlisted the help of my friend Jian. 
First, he weighs the solid ingredients. Solid tungsten trioxide powder will provide us with the central metal atom, while solid sulfur provides us with the chalcogen atoms. He then places the silicon wafers upside down above the oxide powder and loads them into a tube furnace. As the central portion of the furnace heats up to around 900 C, the tungsten oxide powder begins to sublimate. The sulfur, which is heated in a separate portion of the furnace, flows in along with inert gas and reacts with the oxide while depositing tungsten disulfide on the silicon wafer. The final result is a nanometer thick film that shows a clear color contrast despite its extreme thinness. Hopefully in this short video you've learned a little bit about transition metal dye chalk to 9 nanometers and about how these materials are exciting for new applications in energy and electronics. Thanks. That's it.